216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. This is the best time of the year when the leaves are falling and so is your IQ because you're listening to The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Another $1,000 for you here. Listen for that keyword from the buzzard bookie in about five or six minutes. We'll try to get it right on time. Cavaliers preseason ball is tonight as well. They are in Atlanta to play the Hawks. That's a 7.30 tip-off. So your pregame coverage, if you want to get the full bug, is at 7 o'clock tonight on MMS as we um, get close to the official beginning of basketball season. October 27th is going to be the Cavaliers' regular season opener. Oklahoma City Thunder are going to be in town. And ooh, won't that be fun? Will we be somewhere for Cavs opening day? Don't know yet. That'd be nice. Be fun. But Cavs basketball tonight. Back on the buzzer. Um, Boy, I'm fascinated. Somebody sent me this. One of my neighbor's in Avon, Ohio. You ever heard of Avon, Ohio? Yep. Of course, a town that was founded by the door-to-door -door makeup conglomerate. I cannot refute that. And they still uh, bear their name. It's always fascinating to me the things that people will bother the police for that show up in the police blotter. A vandalism call on Bradford Lane in Avon. A resident called the police around noon to report that an unknown person had put cheese on his mailbox overnight. Ah. There was no further information at the time of the report. Cheesed him. Got him. That is an old person, boy. Old person. It's noon, so they've been up for eight hours. And uh, looking out, going out to get the mail, because what else are they going to do? Cheesy and uh, call the police. Hey, someone put cheese on my mailbox. In my neighborhood, we've had a rash of kids riding their bikes across people's lawns. Oh, my God. Ooh, and that's and of course, that's, do. that is something that um, uh, multiple people are contending with right now as kids. And the trouble is, because everyone has cameras now on their homes, it's not difficult. To figure out who it is. Well, even if you don't know who it is, you can still disseminate those photos or that video and go, hey, mm -hmm. FYI. But, uh, you know, a couple of summers ago, I walked out uh, to my front yard and there were massive tire tracks through my front yard. And it became clear as I was kind of Columboing the situation, it seemed to me, because they had left some tread on the side street too, that somebody just missed the turn and had to have been going fast enough where... Rather than slowing down or taking the long way around, they just pulled a hard right and drove through my front lawn to get to the side street. I was like, somebody was moving at a good clip. I have a friend that lives on a very busy street going into Lakewood, and they had to put, like, a reinforced guardrail up. Yeah. Because in the first six months that they lived there, three different cars crashed into their driveway, their porch, oh, and their sucks. house. Oh, my God. Because it's like a little bit of a curve and yep. people aren't paying attention and uh, drinking and driving doesn't help. Don't I've seen that. people, like, put giant rocks, yeah. like, on the corner of their front yard. One yep. of my neighbors has a massive, massive boulder. He's on the corner, and I don't know if it's ever been hit. Three times somebody drives into their house? Three different people, yeah. I wasn't the same person every time. Well, no, yeah. I just mean three. Yeah, they had yeah. three. Like, within three like incidences. Six months. Wow. You got to move and, at that And point. it still happens all the time. There's just a reinfor reinforced guardrail there now, so they just don't get to their house. Yeah. Well, this call to the police out there in Avon didn't rise to the level of that kind of. This was just somebody who wanted to let the police know because what that, you know, you got to, you got to humor a person that calls that in. All right, sir, well, if we hear anything. Check it out. 
You probably ask a couple of like cursory an, questions. Was it what kind of cheese make it sound like you're interested in, in in protecting and serving? I would be like, stay away from me, sir. You have the cheese touch now, and we can't deal with you. Diary of a wimpy kid. It's the diary of a wimpy kid. Uh, yeah, cheese on the mailbox overnight. Now, here's the question, because I assume when I read this that it was a driveway mailbox, like a street-side mailbox. But a lot of houses, they've got the mailbox on the house. It's right by the front door. Would you feel weird? See, then you might, uh, it's conceivable you'd have somebody on camera. But if somebody walked but up to your house. But if there's person, they probably don't have a cam. That's probably true. Yeah. They got cheesed. But if, <laughs> I mean, getting, getting your house egged is one thing, but getting cheesed, that's personal. Yeah. Boy, I would have gotten my ass kicked if I was a kid and I was with a group of people who were like egging houses. Like I had friends that would like TP and egg houses. And it was just so foreign to me. I was like, you know, I get it. I was 40 when I was 10. I was like, that's property damage. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> we but, did uh, all that. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, but if you got caught, it was such a completely avoidable pain in the ass. Like, but if why you don't would... get caught, it's so fun. But is it? Yeah. Throwing eggs at a house I'll and then you're you. driving by and they're cursing and they're scrubbing egg off the like I guess I didn't understand the appeal of that. There fun. there was a few weeks in the winter of nineteen probably ninety seven where we would go out it was and a cold we'd, winter. we'd TV houses and then uh pull mailboxes out of the ground and I wasn't with them this one time, but uh, a group of my friends did that. They pulled all like all these different mailboxes up and then stacked them up together, like almost like in a teepee shape, in the middle of the street. And it was in the paper. And these kids were so proud of oh, it, yeah. even though they get they never got caught. But they they like were so they were showing off. Everybody like that was us. We did that, and it, it was it was. Big news around Medina. Is They're it like, just boredom? I mean, you're vandalism. in the sticks. They're just causing just problems. Kids being idiots. Just being dumb. You think it's funny? We ne'er do wells. We were toilet paper uh, mailbox tufts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we crab had crab apple, apple tufts, tufts but, I, but but you were the crab apple tufts. I was, but I didn't mean to be. Gosh. Didn't mean to be. We were toilet papering houses one time at a sleepover. We were out just, just, just doing dumb kid stuff. Seeing mm -hmm. you're just gonna get in trouble. And the one house that we TP'd. Uh, the cops caught us and they found us the next day we had to go back and clean it up and the kid's dad worked at our school the kid that we were TPing his house his dad worked at our school and That's he awkward. was well he was so annoying he was like telling us how the history of the tree in his front yard like this is a 2,000 paper, year old tree and you damaged the bark 2, on this <laughs> historical t tree was planted here by Native American and we're yeah, like oh we're God. like it's like 6 in the morning we're out there cleaning up toilet paper annoyed and he's giving us a lecture on how we damaged his old Native American tree and that's why I'm saying it can't be worth it if you don't get caught, it's worth it. It's well, a lot right, of fun. But, but, but nobody plans to get caught. But if you do, you're going to be subject to some guy's dumb story about a fake 2,000-year-old tree. Right. We, we had a huge tree in our front yard. And I remember one morning waking up to go to school, and it was teepeed. And it's a mass. It, this was my childhood home. so And the tree was massive even then. It's even bigger now. I don't know how they got all of that on there. And I and I was so young, I don't remember how they got it off. Maybe my, knowing my mom, I'm sure she probably waited till it rained and all the toilet paper is all biodegradable anyway. So it just, I don't know, just went away. But it was covered. Like every branch had toilet paper on it. Um, and so it, it looked like a few hour, three or four hour job. And yeah, that that was one time. Did I you remember. get chosen at random or were you a kid that they were trying to I think our give house, a hard time? I think our house was the only one. And we were... Our house, I think every neighborhood has the house that is kind of like the host house. My mom was always either asleep or at work. So we would always be amongst the neighborhood. So whenever there were kids missing, <laughs> whenever they weren't home, they would always check our house to see what bikes were there so they know where their kids were. And so we were just a known house, so therefore it made us a target. Um, so I don't remember anyone else getting TP'd. Dude, I TP'd so much. I was always doing stuff like that. But Such we also waste. did it for cheerleading, where we would go. This is we the worst thing ever. We did it with, like, ever. church kids would do it all yeah, the time. Yeah, this was the worst thing ever. So a tradition that we did, I don't know if they still do this or not, uh, a tradition that we did was on the first day of the football players' two-a-days. 
So that's when they're waking up at 6 in the morning and practicing from 6 to 9 and then coming back and doing it again in the afternoon. So I have two practices Mm -hmm. a day. Well, the school-sanctioned tradition was to uh, line the field with encouraging signs. You know, so we would line the entire fence of the whole football field with banners and signs and let's go Braves and whatever, whatever, Like, right? I'll show you my boobs, that kind of stuff? No, like school stuff, like school spirit stuff. I'll like, we're the best books. and, like, all their names <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. The non-school sanctioned part was that we would also go and TP all of their houses. And now the looking, football players. The football players. And now looking back on that, I'm like, what a horrible day for those kids. Like, not only yes. did they have to practice twice a day in the summer, now they have to come home and clean up their yards and clean up. We would trash like, their people, locker rooms, clean up kids, their locker rooms. Why can't kids like, figure that out at the time? I well, mean, because we're just having fun. We're 14, 15 years old. I get it. It just doesn't seem like fun. Yeah. Like, what's just the part fun? of it? But I think some parents, too, were just like, it's just kids having fun, man. See, I was a ding- It's not a big deal. It's just toilet paper. I yeah, it's not the end of the world, but I mean, you know, if somebody comes by. Somebody's playing, you know, baseball with your mailbox, and no, we weren't doing that. We were always toy, toy paving, or what we we would uh, fork people's yards where you would. Get oh my like, gosh, that's so you get like you get like a thousand plastic forks and stick them all in people. But, but you but, had ten but, or fifteen people doing it. But at least that requires some work. You can go out and just pull the forks out. I mean, it's yeah. a pain in the ass, but it's not ruining. You know, it's not egg all over your house or anything like I, that. To me, is kind of harmless. I didn't. We do, never did eggs. We, we always did, did the harmless paper, stuff. Is yeah. what I'm saying. I was a ding-dong ditch guy. That was my camp. That's not what we call it. That's not what they call it in Medina. (laughs) What do they call it? Don't worry about it. It It's a different time. See me after the show. I've (laughs) got to give you some money here. It's $1,000 courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Bills. That's Bills. Enter it now at WMMS.com. This is unconfirmed, but there is a story out there that Mary Lou Retton has died. Remember Mary Lou Retton? Yeah. No. She was uh She was an Olympic the gold one that winning gymnast. That the Grinch could be go- Oh. <laughs> no, that's Mary Lou Who. No, it's Cindy Lou Who. That's Cindy Lou Who. This says she's in the ICU fighting for her life. Is that what it says? Due to pneumonia. That's oh. what I see. All right. Well, then somebody jumped the gun. 16 minutes ago, fighting for her life. Somebody jumped the gun then. All right. Fighting for her life. Well, let's hope that she With pneumonia. fights properly. She was very, very tiny back in the day. And it was like like Carrie Strug. Remember mm-hmm. Carrie Strug, the one who broke her leg and still won the gold, I think? Spring. She was seen as like, yeah. I'm sorry? I think she just sprained her ankle. <laughs> she didn't break, break her leg. Her leg. <laughs> um, now, that would have been impressive. Uh, but uh, she was seen as kind of like the successor to Mary Lou Retton. But Mary Lou Retton was on the Wheaties box, I think. She was the first American woman to win the all-around gold in the 84 Olympics. She also won two silvers and bronzes that year. And she's in the International Gymnastics Hall of Fame, or the IGF. And uh, the first woman to be selected into the Houston Sports Hall of Fame, or HSHF. And, uh, oh, okay, well, good. Then she's not dead. Yet. Yet. Reports of her death well, have I'm been... not dead yet. Yeah, right. I mean, we're all in the same boat as Mary Lou Retton. Now I'm bummed out. Fighting for our lives? I mean... We're all almost dead. You're I mean, pound cake for your life. <laughs> He's gonna... No. He's gonna yoke a bitch. He's going to cooter kick his way to $50,000. Who's paying $50,000? That's what he said. I don't know. He said $30 million. And he's going to cooter kick his way to $30 million. <laughs> Listen, if I need to, I will. <laughs> pound in this corner. Cody, the cooter kicker, <laughs> pound kick brown. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, well, all right. Get his satin robe I together. I've never his, seen a cooter his... I couldn't kick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Balboa! <my> <laughs> Why don't you get down here and be with a real man? With a real cooter kicker. <laughs> There's something there. Hey, gang, catching up from the podcast. Please differentiate a play with no songs. A musical. It has songs. Please make a note. Oh, right. I'll make it easier for you. Musicals, uh, plays are sometimes good. Musicals always suck. 
How many that songs? True. No, so, there are no songs in plays. Mm. What? Even if there's one song in a play that makes it a musical, not a I don't know. Because technically, Hocus Pocus would be considered a musical. Ask, it has, uh, it is a musical. Ask, uh, what's his name there? Wait a minute. When when were we talking about musicals? I went and we saw a play last Probably week. were. I don't know. Uh, we think we were talking about uh, The Wiz. The Wiz. We were talking about The Wiz. There you go. Which I think got, they, they had, they're doing it over at uh, Playhouse right now. It got canceled. Just someone, one of someone them. Someone got sick. Just one of the shows. Oh, I thought it was all of it. I mean, uh, they call, I mean, they go Broadway plays, Wicked, The Lion King. They call mm-hmm. them plays. I mean, I don't, I don't know what, uh, well, I'm saying Hocus maybe Pocus, that's a distinction without a difference. They have Sarah singing under her little broom, Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> they were singing under her little broom, and then there's that, the I Cast a Spell on You song. But those are the only two songs in the movie. I don't think that qualifies. Well, that's not a play, though. It's a movie. He's talking about plays versus musicals. He's telling us mm-hmm. plays Where don't have Pocus music. Where did come from? That's pound cake. That's his touchstone. That's all he <laughs> identifies with is Hocus Pocus. Blake is obsessed with Hocus Pocus, too. I think Except I said she's that. seven. You said the second one, though. Or is she into the first one? She's finally. in the second one. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, a lot of songs in that one. Book of Mormon's a great musical. Yeah, I like yeah, Book of Mormon. Yeah. What play did you see? I saw that play. I talked about it last week, uh, 1970. What's that about? It was about uh, kids getting drafted or waiting for the draft in, for Vietnam. That sounds stupid. It was good. It was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Did it have music in it? Because that would make you it know, a musical. There was there was a song. Like when they came back from intermission, there was a song. So, but it was just a guy with a guitar. So was it know. 1970 play? Mm. This is my music in the play. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. Mm-hmm. It was good though. I, All right. I really enjoyed it. Very well, you are thoughtful. our resident patron of the arts. Yeah. This this weekend, I'm going to a magic show. Mary, what are you doing on Saturday? You want to go to a magic show? What am I doing, Sarah? I, got got a, I have my own show. Yeah. Yeah. When you're done with Sassies, meet me up here. You'll be done by nine thirty, right? No. Oh. They don't know me. I got. Um, I got what, a show. Um, I got a show, and then I got to pop over and catch the magic show. What's the? Who's doing the magic? The Allens. Oh, we've talked about that. Yeah, we talked about okay. them. They're on my podcast this week. Uh, I'm very excited. Mary actually went and saw them before. Yeah, they're good. You didn't mind that they were lying. I didn't mind that they were lying. It's alright. Now, why did you not mind that they were lying? Because I know them personally. So the only thing keeping you from taking magicians seriously is a personal relationship with them. Uh-huh. Hmm. So if you knew Derek Delgadio. I would might feel differently. Greatest magician of all liar. time. Greatest illusionist of all time. Yeah, I still think he's a liar. Unprecedented. Sure, if that's what you think. I'm pretty sure he tells you right at the beginning that he's lying. I don't think he says that. He says, I know everything, and here's a letter from your dead dad. <laughs> <laughs> what if he gave you a letter from your dead I'd dad? I'd be furious. I'd Why? be so mad. What if you opened it up? Because I mean, it's not actually the... from my dead dad. You're, no. you're, this is exactly what got me worked up in the but first place. But you know it's not from your dad. Then stop but trying what, to make it like it is. What if the letter... I mean, you're, you're familiar with reality. You know it's not a letter from your dad. But right. what if that letter was so spot on That would make me even and, more mad. Wow. If he did enough research to be, this is what I said when I said he's like preying on people. So you're looking for reasons to get mad at them. No, I don't want you to prey on people. But he's not preying on but people. But he is. They he's all taking... know it's fake. Okay. He. The whole point of magic is so that you think it's not fake. That's the whole point. No, the whole point is that you're blown away by the illusion this person was able to perform. No. I'm only I cra- think- only crazy people think that magic and voodoo that that kind of stuff is people who are going to a show they bought a ticket and they I, know it's a show I also you- think those letters that were it's the fascination in the, in the uh performance were written by people that they know I think that's part of going to that show what that everybody has to have somebody write a letter yeah I don't like that but they're having such a genuine emotional reaction Good for them. to them. It. It's not for me. I don't care how they feel. You asked me what I felt, and I told I, you. I, I don't I, like them. I'm but just, you like the Allens. Yeah, they're nice people. <laughs> Terry Doug Audio seems like a very right, nice but, person. But to anyone but who... But he also isn't... Tra- he's not doing stuff like but that. But to anyone in the audience who doesn't know them personally, they're doing I what you accuse the other people of doing. on an island of my own, in my opinion, on magicians. And I know that. So I'm not going to try to bring my logic to other people. Well, the word logic is being used in as wide as possible sense there. To you. Just because no, it doesn't make sense to you doesn't mean it's not logic to me. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, anyway, 
uh, uh, Bill is going on. <laughs> yeah, Friday I'm going night. to see uh, Saturday, Saturday, night. Saturday night. Saturday night. All right. Friday is night. it a new show? It's their yeah, it's their fifth season. They, so they said they're doing a few standards or like not standards, but like things from their old shows. But they got new stuff that they're working in. So I'm excited. Is I, this I a residency that they do? Yeah, or? they do. They do a residency at the uh, Alex Theater at the Nine. Okay. And on the excited. east side. Yeah, over there on the east side on Ninth Street, <laughs> East Ninth. <laughs> uh, but I'm doing a show at Playhouse Square first, so I gotta do some comedy and then pop over, and then be a good audience member. Hmm. I'm excited because I I love sleight of hand. I love magic. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Mary feels slighted at mm -hmm. those shows, but not by them because she knows them. They're friends. Okay. Well, there you go. Is the, the the wife's hot, right? Is she foxy? Oh, yeah. They're both pretty good looking. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not looking at the dude. I'm curious if she's foxy. I'll put it this way. I'll watch him have sex. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have to poop. Who would you not watch have sex? A lot of people. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. There's a lot oh, of okay. watch have sex. I'm just checking. <laughs>